Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our webinar uh, called Maximizing the Functionality of the Redbird Cloud. All right, uh, so this will be kind of a quick one today. Um, but first, let's go ahead and uh, make some introductions. My name is Josh Harnagel. I'm the VP of Marketing for Redbird Flight Simulations, and uh, I'm a CFI, double I, and an MEI, and I help, in addition to Redbird's kind of a smaller company, and in addition to marketing, I kind of help with some of our product direction and development uh, activities. And so I was pretty involved in the building of these tools when we were originally building them and as they've been updated. So I know them fairly well. Um, with that said, what we're gonna, a couple of admin things. Um, if you have questions, please uh, use the uh, question input box inside of GoToWebinar. Type them in whenever they occur to you. I'll try to answer them as I go. I may take uh, pause, uh, every once in a while to answer some of the questions if they build up. Um, I have Joey Colloran on um, the webinar as well, and she'll be managing the questions. So you, you may see some answers directly from her. Um, so with that said, let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, the Redbird Cloud, um, this is cloud as in software cloud, like uh, Amazon AWS kind of thing, uh, not cloud as in meteorological formation. So if you're signed up, for a discussion about weather. Uh, unfortunately, this is the wrong wrong venue. Uh, we're gonna be talking about software. Um, it should be fairly uh, quick today. Um, a lot of what I'm gonna be doing is actually just walking through uh, the live websites and showing you what, what's up there. Um, and the first part is gonna be related to your indiv an individual account. So this could be a person who flies a Redbird, or it could be um, a flight school, you know, CFI, something like that. Um, and then the last two things we'll talk about are really specifically for owners and operators of Redbird simulators, especially the large ones in particular, but also um, the locator stuff uh, applies to desktops too. So um, the Redbird cloud does a couple of things. It's made up of a bunch of different apps that all sort of work together. We, um, when you fly a sim, if your SIM is connected to the internet or when it's connected to the internet um, and you've opted into it, um, the data from that flight gets pushed up to the cloud and gets associated with a pilot, assuming there was a pilot key plugged in, uh, and then they can access that flight data. We also That's also how we do our service billing and Hobbs runnings and that, those sorts of things. So um, a, lot of, a lot of flight data is coming up all the time. Um, and like I said, if you have a pilot key plugged in while you do the flight, whether it's a free flight, a gift flight, a safe flight, doesn't matter, that will be recorded and available for access later, which we'll talk about. Um, and then we also have some educational, like the gift content um, is on our in, in the cloud. And we do integrate with some uh, software tools like ForeFlight, which we'll talk about. Uh, and then lastly, the last two things are a location management, so uh, just managing your listing on the Redbird, find a Redbird uh, app, and then a new one, brand new one, I don't even think it's actually officially released yet, but it will be really shortly, is managing our billing for service agreements for the long, for the larger SINs. So again, uh, we'll just dive right in, and if you have questions, please, please type them in and I'll get to them. So first off, let's go ahead and uh, get in. Hopefully you guys, yep, looks like you're seeing. This is, um, if you go up here, you can see this is account.redbirdflight.com. Um, if you go to landing.redbirdflight.com, there's a link right here. You can click that and that'll take you to um, your account. There's also a link on our main website in various places, but the easiest way is account.redbirdflight.com. You get a login screen. So just like any other software tool, you log in with an email address and a password. Um, if you don't have an account, click register, first name, last name, email, password. Pretty straightforward, um, nothing fancy about that. And then you get a Redbird account, which gives you access to all of these tools. So we'll, we're gonna sign in as me. And um, I'm a, uh, an admin, so I have a few, uh, uh, I'm a location manager in this version. So I have a few, extra permissions, but depending on what you what you have, you may see something slightly different, but not terribly different. So this is our first account screen. Um, and here we can do things like change our name or our password, stuff like that. 
we can generate a pilot key, which if you're not familiar with that, um, Danny, are you, uh, can no one see my screen? Danny says that uh, we're not able, he's not able to see my screen. Uh, if that's the case, then this is gonna be, uh, okay. All right, so it looks like some people can see me. All right, great, thank you. Otherwise, this was gonna be kind of a hard uh, presentation. So um, on the pilot keys, um, what you're doing here is, so uh, back up a little bit. Our simulators are out in the wild somewhere um, and they may or may not be connected to the internet and they, um, we can't guarantee the security of the device, right? Somebody owns it, they can install software on it if they want, um, they, who knows what can happen. And so we can't use the local computer um, with, um, to, to, to validate based on like a, a password or something like that, because what's gonna happen is somebody could spoof it or add some malicious software in there and then you type your password in that simulator and all of a sudden that password is compromised and they can log into your website on, onto our website and do all kinds of stuff with your account. Um, so what we do, what we did was we came up with the idea of a pilot key, which is an encrypted file. It's a small encrypted file and it's got a pin number. Um, and you plug the key in, the, the machine reads the file and it asks you for a pin number. The pin number decrypts the file and it says, hey, this is who I am. These are the licenses I have. This is the permissions I have access, the things I have access to. Um, and that way, uh, if the key gets lost, it's no big deal. You just make a new one. If uh, the pin gets compromised, it's no big deal. The only thing you can use the pin to do is unlock a key on a SIM. You can't use it to log in and like change a billing contact or something like that. Um, so that that's a, just a, a layer of security in those situations where you do not have, uh, we can't have an internet connection. Now the, the newer versions of Navigator um, do allow you to log in with your password and email address uh, if you're connected to the internet. So you don't always need a pilot key. Um, but to, do, to generate a pilot key, what you do is you type in a four to six digit PIN number, confirm it, hit generate download, and that will generate a file called um, first initial last name dot rbpk. Uh, it'll download to your downloads folder on your web on your computer. You would take that file and copy and paste it onto a USB thumb drive. Um, and now you can go into a SIM and plug it in. And as long as it's at the base, the root level of that USB thumb drive, you should have access to um, the, the the licenses that you have. Anytime you add a license, so we'll get to curriculum licenses in a second, but let's say, you were to add a gift license to your account, um, you need to generate a new pilot key. The pilot key doesn't, if it's already on a, a, a USB thumb drive, it's not gonna auto update. Um, and part of the process when you sign up originally with a new license key is it'll prompt you to generate a pilot key, no, a license. So that's our pilot keys. Curriculum licenses, things, um, we have a bunch of different types of curriculum that you can license. Right now, the main ones that you get out in public are GIFT, Private Pilot, or GIFT Instrument. Um, they have a 16, they all, they all have a 16 digit activation code, 16 character activation code. If you do that, it activates the license and now it's associated with your account. If you're online, you get access to the curriculum and the materials and then you would need to generate a pilot key to you get access to the flights on the simulator. Um, there are other types of licenses. Most of them are custom. Uh, we do custom license types for uh, large schools that want a specific package of gift programs or for uh, some of our um, middle schools and high schools that are doing a curriculum, uh, simulated flight school curriculum. So, uh, all of those, though, work the same way. It's a 16-character license code. You type it in, activate, download a new pilot key. Okay, so let's talk about what these curriculum licenses get you. Um, if I go to learning.redbirdflight.com, um, I'm shown a, uh, this is a, an LMS, a learning management system that's got um, some uh, 
courses in it. Um, I, it knows who I am um, because I logged in on this tab over here on my account tab. Uh, learning knows that I am um, who I am. If I log out, I can log back in and it'll all work the same. Um, and I am, you can see here under curriculum licenses, I have a gift IFR and a gift PPL license that are both activated. So this virtual STEM lab is free. Everybody has that. Uh, and then the instrument and private are paid things that you unlock with a gift license. Um, if you go into, let's say private pilot, we go in here and now we have our course description with all of our lessons. If you uh, are not, if you don't have a license, you can still go to learning.redbirdflight.com and you can do this intro flight uh, course. It's, it's in there and um, you can have access to that um, to see how it works. So anyways, these, um, these, each one of these uh, lessons has like, um, we'll do power on stall. Um, it's got a text description of the, of the gift mission. It's got keys to success, a video. And if you have flights associated with it, they'll show up here, uh, like as you do flights, um, the, the power on flight for gift, it'll show up right here. Um, and so that, that's where we have our, uh, all of our content for private and instrument. Gift private and instrument are on learning.redbirdflight.com. Okay, so the next quick thing, or the next thing I wanna talk about, and again, if you have questions, type them in. If I'm going too fast, tell me to slow down. Um, up on this top toolbar, I have a little called an app launcher. It's the, it's the three by three grid of squares. If I click on that. This is where I have my Redbird Cloud apps. Um, should be a day or so, learning will show up in here as well. And then billing, once that gets released, will show up in here. Um, right now we're in the account app. So if I click on that, hey, I'm here at account. Um, if I click on debrief, this one is probably the most interesting one for your average pilot. So if I click debrief, I can also access that this by going to debrief.redbirdflight.com. And I have a list of all the flights I have flown in a Redbird simulator that could identify the pilot as me, either with the pilot key plugged in or signed in with my um, username and password if the simulator was connected to the internet. And you'll see um, mostly it's been uh, GIF flights, right? I've been actually testing the version two of um, of, of GIF PPL, but I also have a free flight in here. So it's important to remember that you don't necessarily need a GIF license to debrief them. You can debrief free flights and safe flights as well. So what that looks like is we click it and it'll pull up and it'll show, uh, it looks like this flight wasn't very interesting. Um, let's go find a more interesting flight here. Um, da -da. I usually use the development account to fly, so I don't have a whole bunch, but okay. So let's look at this ILS. Um, this is an ILS with gift instrument um, that I flew and I have a plan view so I can see the flight that I took. And then I have this altitude um, view and I can see my altitude and airspeed and G-force and I can turn this stuff off if it's a little too distracting. Um, and I can show, what my altitude, my airspeed, the ground elevation was, et cetera, as I come in. Um, and you'll see it identifies when I had a, if I banked over 30 degrees, it'll identify that. If I had a high G-force over, um, I think it's over uh, 1G, um, it'll show up on there. So that's the landing where I have my high Gs. This was a gift flight. So I'll also have all of my scores. So this was a fairly successful, um, gift flight, I got an 84% on it. Um, but for any gift flight that you do, you get both the raw flight track and path, as well as your gift scores. If you do a, um, like if we're in that free flight, uh, actually, I think I can filter. Um, look at that. Um, if you're in a free flight and you, Fly it without a um, without gift scores. You won't sh it won't show that gift score block. Looks like I've mostly flown gift flights with this. So, and anyways, um, the like I said, the free flight it'll just have our plan view and our altitude view. 
So this, like I said, works for any pilot logged in with a pilot key or logged in with their username and, and password. Uh, when they fly a flight, it'll get uploaded to the Redbird cloud and they can debrief it. You'll notice this says debrief with Redbird because we actually have the ability to debrief with Cloud Ahoy if you integrate, if you have an account with Cloud Ahoy and you integrate it, which I'll cover in just a second. Okay, so we have a couple of questions. Uh, Terry Anderson, our MDX does not use pilot keys. Um, I am not, so I, that's probably, you probably mean MCX, and I am not aware of a uh, simulator that we've built that doesn't have pilot keys. Um, I may be, I may have, that confused but uh terry if you want to send an email to uh info at redbirdflight.com to ask that question uh we can look up your unit but it should i mean since the very first sim we've been shipping them with a usb port to support pilot keys okay uh cost of gift for individual and school both have td uh td2 so gift is retail price is 249 dollars a license uh for private or instrument uh, there's a little discount if you buy them both. Um, if you are a school and you would like to resell them to your students, you can buy it in bulk in five, 10 or 15 or more uh, quantities and you get a price break. Um, so I think at like 15, it goes down, the cost goes down to like $200. Um, and obviously the idea is you sell it at MSRP and you make the difference. Um, okay, so this is our, our debrief. Um, Thing. There's a little tiny text box right up here that says missing flights. Well, because what can happen is let's say you're at a school where the SIM doesn't connect to the internet, but you plug your pilot key in, you identify yourself, you fly your flight, you come back here and it's not there because the SIM's not on the internet. So how could it get there? Uh, we built a little app called Redbird Sync um, that runs on either Windows or Mac and you can download it onto your, onto your computer. And what'll happen is when you plug that USB pilot, that pilot key into your computer, your personal computer, and it's got Redbird Sync installed, it'll recognize it and upload those files to the cloud um, automatically so you'll have access to them. So it's a way to get your flight files without having to uh, have the SIM connected to the internet. So it's missing flights, Redbird Sync. All right, so let's go back. Um, Let's make sure I we've covered, ah, yes. Uh, time to talk about software integration. Okay. All right, so let's go back to our account at redbirdflight.com. And um, we've talked about pilot keys, we've talked about curriculum licenses, now let's talk about integrations. So right now we have three uh, available integrations, ForeFlight, Cloud Ahoy, and Pilot Partner. So for flight, if you have a for flight account, uh, one of their paid accounts, you can connect your Redbird account to your for flight account. And whenever you fly something in a Redbird SIM, it will push it into your log, your for flight logbook as a draft um, time, you know, the total time, that kind of stuff. And then you can go in and edit it, add any other additional information, accept it, or you can delete it if you don't want it in your logbook for some reason. But um, so this, what this does is it creates an automatic push from when you fly, fly it in the SIM, assuming again, you have a pilot key plugged in, the SIM can identify that you are the pilot, it'll push it to your four flight account. Um, with Cloud Ahoy, if you have a Cloud Ahoy, a paid Cloud Ahoy account, um, you again can integrate it, connect it, and then you can debrief your flights in Cloud Ahoy. And they have uh, by far and away an extremely powerful debriefing tool that does um much better visualizations and all kinds of extra stuff our debriefing tool is pretty basic honestly but cloud ahoy's got the you know the, the bee's knees um and so if you if you use cloud ahoy as something you're interested in uh this is a good way to push your sim flights into cloud ahoy automatically um and then pilot partner is also a logbook tool um just kind of like for flight where you can make the connection and when you fly a flight in the sim it will push it into pilot partner automatically as a draft in your logbook okay so those are the available software integrations as they sit um we're working on more uh, obviously and um okay so now let's talk uh that that basically covers it for your individual pilot so um 
if you are, um, uh, just to recap real quick, you have an account that you can manage uh, your curriculum licenses, pilot keys, learning.redbirdflight.com, if you have a gift license, can give you access to the curriculum online, all the course material online, and debrief.redbirdflight.com can give you access to all of your flight history that you can review and, and look at again. And again, if you're at account.redbirdflight.com, you can click this little thing and it'll pull up um, the available apps. All right, so Stephen is asking, is for flight in integration um, with and without a bad elf? Yes, so, okay, so this is different than the uh, um, Corvus or Cygnus product. Um, Corvus or Cygnus are, are, are simulator software or are products for our sims that show your position on for flight as you fly a flight in real time in the EFB. Um, so it updates the, the EFB, you know, it says this is where the airplane is based on where the simulator is in the real world. This for flight integration just after you fly your flight. So it's, it has nothing to do with using for flight in the cockpit. It's after you fly your, fly your flight, it pushes the logbook entry into for flight logbook. Um, now, if you have Cygnus uh, it, and you have your settings right, it may actually do that automatically, de depending on if you have for flight automatically take any, any time it thinks there's a flight to create a logbook entry, it may do that automatically without having an integration on this side with just having Cygnus or Corvus. Um, but even if you don't have Cygnus or Corvus, you can still use this integration to push your flight history into for flight logbook. Um, thank you, Stephen. Good question. Okay, so that covers us as far as um, individual pilots. So let's talk about a flight school itself. Um, so there's two things a flight school can do now. Um, one is manage its location and the other is manage its billing. So first, First and foremost, let's talk about what a location is. I'm gonna to go to a different browser where I'm not signed in. Uh, this is locator.redbirdflight.com, aka find a redbird. Uh, it is linked on our main website, so it does get a fair amount of traffic from uh, potentials, uh, potential clients, that kind of stuff. So it's right here, findaredbird.com. We push it out to people fairly frequently. So it does get a fair amount of traffic, and it's got a listing of every redbird out there that wants to be out there um, and this is based off of just uh, our customer database essentially right um, we've added the ability for individual owners to manage their listing so what that means is let's we'll pick on somebody here let's go to tstc i know they haven't claimed it so texas state technical college all we, we have a location if i click on this uh, i see they have an fmx but I don't really have a whole lot of other information. I just see that. Um, it, and I have a, is this your business? Interesting. We'll come back to that in a second. Now, if I go to Redbird Flight Simulations, oh, look, there's a logo. That's nice. And since we're Redbird, we have all the sim types. Um, but I have a logo and a cover page, and I have a little description. I got more information. I got emails and websites and directions and all kinds of stuff. I can request more info. Um, if I do this, I'll um, put in this, um, fill out this form and it'll send an email to this person uh, or to this flight school saying I'm, I'm interested in it. Um, and so this is a claimed, it says right up here, claimed location by the owner. So let's say you're TSTC and you would like to claim your location. You go into your, you find your listing on locator.redbirdflight.com and you hit, is this your business? And now um, it's kind of a manual process right now, but what you'll do, type in your name, all the, your basic information and you submit claim. And what happens is we get an email and says, hey, this person would like to claim this uh, simulator location and we manually approve it. And that's right now the best way we can think to prevent people from claiming locations that aren't their own. And obviously on our system side, we know who owns or manages each simulator pretty well. Um, so this gives us a chance to double check that, that it's right. And within about five days, it'll get a confirmation. When you get a confirmation, you'll get an email about it and you'll be asked to log, create an account and log in. So once you have, once you've been marked, indicated on our side that you own that location, 
um, it looks a little bit differently. So first off, you're gonna see a locations box down here. If you don't manage any locations, this box just won't even show up. It'll end at integrations. So I see Redbird Flight Simulations. Uh, I can click edit this location. And now I can put in names. I can um, set in all my information, logos, cover photos, all that kind of stuff. And some of you may have uh, done this where you put in a cover photo recently and there was a little bug, but we've got that fixed now. Um, you can collect whatever location, whatever sims you have. You can put in whatever um, uh, description, all that kind of stuff. And um, so let's talk a little bit about some of these options here. Well, first off, show this location on Find a Redbird. And does it show up on the map? So if let's say you don't want your SIM on the map at all, all you gotta do is claim the location and then unclick that and then it won't show up. Um, if you want to indicate that this location is open to the public, um, which means when I say open to the public, what that will look like is on here, um, that it will it will have all this kind of like contact information and that kind of stuff. If the location is closed to the public, if you um, click this box right here, unclick this box, then it will say this location is closed. Um, it can still show up on the map. So maybe you want your, your university and you want people to know that you have a sim, but it's not really open for people to come in and, and rent, then that's the box to, to uncheck. Um, and then if you want to say you sell gift licenses and then uh, lead collection is that form where they say, send me more, request more information. And all it does is they fill in a form and then we shoot you an email and say, hey, this person requested information about your location. And then down at the bottom here, um, you put in your the email address you want for um, your uh, lead forwarding. So, uh, and then the other thing is you can, um, uh, drag the pin around to make sure that it's on the specific spot, especially on the airport locations. Like if you type in your address, we will we use Google to try to figure out where you are on the map. But a lot of times the like if you're in Hangar 10, Google has no idea what that means. Um, and so it's I think it's it's good to be able to drag it on the map and and actually think that's where I am. Okay, so that's our location. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. And you can, uh, again, uh, lastly, if you are on the Locator app, and even if you haven't um, signed into account, and let's say you're signed out, if you're on the Locator app and you go to the, your location and you've claimed it and you hit owner login, it'll just log you in and then you'll be able to edit it. Okay, so that all is that. So the next thing is billing. So uh, again, this is not here shortly. There will be a new box that goes right here that'll say billing. Um, and then there'll be an app up here that'll say billing probably. But for now, <laughs> and nobody and nobody but probably me has this set up, but if you go to billing.redbirdflight.com, um, you have a uh, service agreement billing management portal. So there's a, there's a good, uh, before we get into this in detail, let me pull this out. Support.redbirdflight.com is our knowledge base. You can find it on our main website, support.redbirdflight.com. Um, there's links to it. But there's actually, if you go down here to Redbird Cloud, you can hit see all articles. And we have uh, a guide to create and edit a user account, a guide to create, uh, to edit a uh, location, um, a guide for the simulator debrief, and a billing application user guide. So when this uh, rolls live, um, it'll actually start probably, you'll get an email invoice that'll look a little different and you'll be able to click pay um, and you'll pay your invoice and you get access to this functionality. Um, and when you, during this process, you'll be able to create, uh, if you don't already have a Redbird account, create a Redbird account and assign a payment method to it. Um, but this article kind of runs through all the steps involved. But just as a quick overview, um, I only have, I'm only under listed as a, um, a contact for a single 
SIM, but if you had multiple SIMs, there would be you'd have access to each each SIM that have a service agreement, you'd have access to it. You can see what your service agreement is, what your billing is. Um, you can uh, set in opt to auto pay, that kind of stuff. Um, if you need a PO number, you can put that in. You can add your um, a default credit card, and this is done through Stripe, so we don't actually see the credit card. We don't know anything about it other than a token that says this is what this card uh, represents to Stripe. Um, and you can see past invoices. If we click on that, we can actually go into the invoice, uh, see line line item by line item, usage and billing, taxes, all that kind of stuff. Um, you can download it as a PDF. If you need to save it, um, it's there for you. Or you can pay it directly. Um, or again, if you say opt into auto pay, it'll pay things that on the day that it's due. Uh, and then last, lastly, uh, you have the ability to access, to manage the users that have access to this portal and who will get the emails about it. Um, the primary billing contact is set by us. So if you need to change your primary billing contact, you have to call us um, and, or send us an email. Um, but assuming if you are the primary billing contact, you, you'll have the ability to add and remove other secondary contacts to this tool as well. So that is River Billing. Again, not live, but should be shortly. Um, I'm actually was hoping that my developer would send me a Slack message in the time when we were up here to tell me the date, but it, he hasn't. So uh, that's that. I think that covers all of this. Not groundbreaking stuff, but potentially very useful. Um, I would lastly, not last but not least, I would remind you, um, go to support.redbirdflight.com and you can find a user guide for basically all the stuff we talked about that goes through in detail with pictures and that kind of stuff. Um, hopefully that's helpful. And I think that is officially it. If you have questions about it, info at redbirdflight.com is the email. Uh, appreciate your time today and let me know if you have any questions.